Hi, my name is Lily Pierce. I'm 27 years old. I'm a lay servant in the United Methodist Church, and I have a disability called Friedrich's ataxia that does affect my speech, as you've likely already noticed. Today's topic is a pretty spicy one, if I do say so myself. Should religion affect politics? As a Christian, should my religious views affect my political views? I'm going to try to keep everyone happy in this video, which probably means that everyone will hate me after it. If you live in America, you already know that the intertwining of Christianity and right-wing politics manifests itself as the evangelical voting bloc. Side note, why does one sect of Christianity get to call dibs on a term that can and should apply to all Christians? Anyway, we know those of us who live in America, that many conservatives have their religious views intertwined with their political views. But to be fair, and so every conservative Christian I know won't hate me, I will play devil's advocate and say that the same thing can happen on the left. I'm in an organization called United Methodist Women, and they are pretty unabashedly liberal. They don't outright say so, but it's pretty obvious in the issues that they support and even their books on the reading program, like this one. The question is, should religion affect politics? And what naturally follows is, was Jesus political? And every non-Christian, and even some Christians, may be wondering, what if we're having to the separation of church and state? Well, let's dive in. Politics is how we think that our government ought to function, which might not seem like a faith issue, but politics does also generally reflect our values, which is very much related to faith issues. A little over a year ago, I wrote a blog post on the unholy union between politics and religion. And in that article, I said Jesus wasn't political. And I got a comment that really was thought-provoking. Someone clarified that while Jesus wasn't partisan, he was political. What I mean by that is that while he wasn't liberal, conservative, democrat, republican, authoritarian, communist, or any of that jazz, he did speak truth to power. He challenged the most rich and powerful in society and cared for the needy and stood for justice. Ultimately, the powers that be got rid of him. Now, if you consider that description that I just laid out, he challenged the most rich and powerful in society and cared for the needy and stood for justice. And if you're not completely jaded into thinking that one side is definitively good and the other is definitively evil, you may can see how that description could be applied to varying political views. A liberal could point out the extremely wealthy and powerful who are often benefited from Republican-backed tax breaks as the powers that be. Caring for the needy and standing with justice could involve instituting a living wage or supporting Black Lives Matter. On the other hand, a conservative could point out limousine liberals, those hypocrites, as the powers that be. And for them, standing with justice and care for the needy could be defending the rights of the unborn, aka opposing abortion, or standing with the police officers that risk their lives daily to protect us. Now obviously we could go on a lot of rabbit trails about what's right or wrong with everything I just said. And we could talk about what is based on empirical data and what's based on lived experiences versus what's based on propaganda. We could even talk about what are the best ways to help people. But here's the point. Since Jesus was political, but not partisan, he can be applied to different partisan viewpoints. I'll tell you the truth and be upfront, I myself lean more liberal, but I am pro-free market, pro-capitalism ultimately. So I lean left within the framework of free market. But hey, I'm young, I don't know everything, I'm still learning, so who knows what I'll think a year from now, but this is how I feel as of December 2020. But what's amazing is that one of my biggest spiritual confidants is very conservative. Amazingly, politics rarely comes into our conversations, because even if we disagree on how to apply the principles of Jesus, we do agree on those principles. At the end of the day, Jesus is spiritual and eternal, 
and politics is worldly and temporary. Christianity transcends politics. If we lived in another country or another time period with totally different government and politics, Jesus would be the same. Ultimately, I do think that our faith should influence our political views. Though I am wary of the idea of hampering other people's freedom based on my views. That's where that good old concept of separation of church and state comes into play. Not all Christians agree, but that's me. And of course, that leads into a discussion of what is subjectively immoral versus objectively immoral. You see how it goes. My faith does affect my political views. I'll be frank with you guys, pursuing God and praying fervently and reading the Bible devoutly pretty much made me go from a super gung-ho Trump-supporting conservative to more of a left-leaning moderate. That's a fun story for another time. But I can still step back and see how, why right-wing Christians feel that their political views do reflect their religious views. They have a different interpretation of what that means for me. I didn't touch on any hot-button issues in this video. Gay marriage, LGBT rights, abortion, immigration, healthcare, wages. Maybe I will in the future, God willing. Pray for me. Pray for me that he guides me because I never want to be a false teacher and I'm always praying that God would use me as a vessel for his truth and his righteousness and his grace. And if you're mad at me for trying too hard to be palatable in this video, then remember this. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. I welcome your civil feedback and God bless you all.